sits within the national boundaries of Azerbaijan, but is populated by Armenians and run practically as its own country. Two thousand Russian Armenian troops will be heading in to replace Armenian soldiers. It's a complex war. A lot of people in the West don't even know about this war happening because they see it as a war in a faraway land. But the region of Nagorno-Karabakh is quite controversial in the sense that it's ethnically Armenia. It always has been for many centuries. Stalin gave that land to Azerbaijan as a present, even though despite all the people living there were Armenian. And after the breakdown of the Soviet Union in the 90s, is Armenia took back that territory in the 90s war against Azerbaijan. And it has never been recognized as Armenia since. contrast between Azerbaijan, which was supported by a NATO member of Turkey, they were using the drones quite effectively. And this, the modern warfare in this conflict has been totally different. And it was very much a war of David and Goliath, where the Armenians, you had young men carrying the AK-47s that their fathers used in, in the 1990s war against uh, a military force that Azerbaijan has been arming itself quite successfully for many for many years, for decades now, with the support of the Turks. So really, the Armenians, I've seen a fort like lions. Um, a lot of it was mountain warfare. And yeah, the, lot, the sense of shame for a lot of these men that they lost the territory that their family, their fathers and grandfathers fought for in the 90s. The majority of civilians had left very quickly when the Azerbaijani forces started bombing the city. So they left in their droves um, very quick. And the only people that remained behind were the old, um, the vulnerable and the sick. And there was only a handful of children and they were living underground continuously. Everyone was living in basements, living in shelters because the threat from drones was massive. So after the peace agreement was signed on November the 10th, the areas that hadn't been taken over militarily during a battle by the Zeris, they, they gained more territory in the peace agreement. So a lot of Armenians that were still living in their homes in nagro karabakh region were told by the government, you've got X, X amount of days to pack up and leave. A lot of people started burning their homes down because they didn't want the Zeris to have them. They were taking as much livestock as they could with them. Yeah, it was chaos and it was, it was really emotional just to see people we got some brilliant footage of um, a guy stood by a house that he just set fire to and he was telling me that he grew up in that house with his grandparents his uncle now owns the house and they're torturing it because they don't want the Azeris to have it Armenians they wanted to continue fighting they didn't want the government to sign this peace deal they wanted to fight to the bitter end it was surreal because one minute I'm watching a guy burn down his house and then over to the left You've got guys stood around the car who were giving out moonshine, telling stories about how life used to be there. And then you've got behind them a group of men around the fire with a young boy um, singing songs and everything. And then the deadline, they're like, right, if we don't get out of here, the Zeris are coming. But um, yeah, it's really surreal. This documentary surprised me um, compared to my last two in the sense that I've seen more of the human side of the war. I've done three tours of Afghanistan, invasion of Iraq, wars, war. Do you mean I've, I've seen action all over the world and stuff like that, filming as well? The shooting of guns doesn't really interest me. What interests me now is the human stories of the war.